It was just a normal day here at the Ross household. Kayla was watching Briar. I was doing a little computer work. The dogs were loafing around, taking naps. We got on a FaceTime chat with some friends of ours. When all of a sudden, the tornado sirens went off. Hey, what's up guys? We, uh, tornado sirens just went off a little bit ago. It's a good thing we prepped our cellar a week or so ago. Um, we're just kind of waiting on the storm now, but we were actually watching our nephew whenever this all went down, so we like rushed down there and uh, whenever it happened, and now we're kind of like at ease for a minute, you know, because there's the thing, it's not just because tornado sirens go off, don't mean tornadoes fixing to rip right through where you're at. Um, it's just a warning because that means there's circulation, you know, on the radar, so. We're keeping an eye on the weather. Uh, nephew and Colt are down, his dad is down in the cellar right now. We're just hanging out, trying to get some things out of the house, what we need, but anyway, this is it. It's the gloomy sky. Kayla said, I wonder if a pizza place delivers to a cellar because <laughs> it's lunchtime. Getting hungry. I guess we could make some sandwiches. Yeah. The colt's hungry. Yeah. Sure enough, it was raining. Yeah. Why is Gingham in here? Because he climbed out of there and basically fell down the steps. What do you mean, fell? Gingham, what are you doing up here? He's not going to be safe up here, Bubbies. Hmm. This is. Better carry him to this would be Gingham's first tornado, too, I think. Is it Gingham's first tornado? Yeah. Or. Warning, tornado warning. of Creek County. So at this point, we still have a tornado warning here to the east of Cushing. If you live in Cushing, you're pretty much in the clear. If you live immediate, in the immediate Cushing area, obviously if you live in a rural area, you know, a couple of miles east, northeast of Cushing, you're still under the gun. The circulation is really just a couple of miles right now. Cellar experience so far is uh, good. Glad we got rid of all the spiders, but it's real loud because of this metal door. Super loud. Sound Pretty rapid succession. So we, we're getting brief tornadic activity on these. But uh, it appears like that rotation may go right over Drum Right. Drum Right is in a tornado warning right now. Yeah, but like later, I was trying to hear about that. Five. I was trying to hear about that little one that they were talking about, you know? That was southeast of us. Need this charter thing? I think she brought that down here. Oh. Didn't you bring that down here? Yeah. All right, time to unlock the hatches. And get out of this hole in the ground for now. Oh my gosh. Definitely got a whirlwind of rain. Our gardening jobs full of water. That's that that's that one point six what'd she say? Inch and a half of rain in thirty minutes? Look at that.
what I was saying earlier in the storm shelter was the experience was good. I'm glad we got it cleaned out and everything. But it's real loud in there because of the, the metal door, you know. Which, not that that's a big deal, you know. I'm just glad to be safe. I'm thankful to have the hole in the ground, don't get me wrong. But if there was anything I could change, it would be to put something either on the inside of it or uh, something to kind of deaden that noise. Just because if you are having to be down there for a while, which, like, we were probably down there an hour or longer. Might end up being like an hour and a half. Like, we were down there for a good little bit. And so, I mean, if there's any way you can help it, it would be nice, you know, to make it quieter. And it's not as uh, dramatic for, like, the dogs, like Paisley. You know, she gets anxious during storms and stuff. Or if you have kids, uh, our nephew's too small right now, so he's not... He didn't, he wasn't worried about it, but like if they were older, if they were nervous, the noise just wouldn't help, you know. But anyway, we, uh, the storm passed. Uh, they said something about they either thought a tornado either touched down in Cushing or, or just really high winds. Something about a roof, what I heard on the news, something about a roof got tore off of some building. I don't know. Uh, haven't even, haven't been to town or anything to actually like look at anything. But anyway, we're good so far. We're safe. They're thinking that there might be more tornadic weather if that's a word but right now it's definitely uh, i think we're under a thunderstorm watch or severe thunderstorm watch or something like that and it's sure enough raining real real bad so i love it i love being home and listening to the to the rain but like i said this rain is almost this is actually kind of bad just because flooding's not good rain's good but flooding's not good obviously so let's go over what happened whenever this sirens went off. Oh. We were on the phone with somebody on FaceTime actually and having a good conversation. We heard some weather alerts but I really wasn't paying attention because I don't get like... Worked up? Yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't want to say I don't care. I just, I don't know. It's like, Well, it's just know. part of, like we talked about yeah. in last You get video. alerts a lot around here. Hey, wanted to drop in here and let you guys know there's only a short amount of time left. If you want any piece from the traditional summer limited edition collection from industrialtradition.com, the designs that we made for you are available, but only until May 17th. Make sure you head over there and grab those ASAP. can use code CREW, all caps, at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Now, back to the vlog. So anyways, all of a sudden, Austin's like, those are the sirens in town. And we, this is for the first time in my life, I live close enough to hear the town sirens. And, um, and I was like, sure enough. And then the loud alert came over the phone that we were actually in a warning. And Briar, my nephew, was here. And so, yeah. Our first, our first reaction was like, just to get him in the cellar. And I don't think we would have reacted like that. You said yeah. something whenever we got down there that I didn't even think about. Anyways, the sirens went off and we, I hadn't been paying attention. And so what? Austin was saying, what did you say? Like you were acting like we needed to go down there. Yeah, so those are the sirens. And I popped in the frame of the people we were FaceTiming and I said, hey, those are the tornado sirens. I said, we got to go. And they're like, oh my gosh. And then yeah. I just said, we got to get to the cellar. Yeah. Which, normally I wouldn't have done that, like, so quick. Because, you know, we're used to, like, watching the storms, you know, checking it out. Like, you don't you don't have to hop in, right? That doesn't mean the well, storm... Well, to be fair, you used to have to hop in, like, right whenever you heard the siren. Like, you should have already kind of been there. But nowadays, they, for the most part... Are able to track them so well that you have a little bit of time which is great that saved tons of lives the technology that they have now but then it was like Austin was saying that we had Briar here my nephew and you know for one not my kid also basically the only human I love on earth um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only one. Not not the only one, but the one I love the most. And so, obviously, you know, top priority. And so, it was just, like, easiest to grab. I put a blanket over him. It was raining out. Put a blanket over him. 
grabbed, we weren't like frantic or anything, grabbed his diaper bag in his car seat. It was just like the easiest thing to just like grab his stuff. But I had his diaper bag kind of strung out because like whenever he gets here in the morning, I like get all his stuff out and put it where we need it or where we use it. And so I collected those things, went down there with the dogs. And we were sitting down there and Kayla said, well, then a lot of stuff happened, but yeah. then after a while, like about 15 minutes later or whatever, I was like, huh, this is interesting because I just like started to realize like we had been down there, my brother came over and it was like, okay, now we're setting down here. And then that's whenever we started actually figuring out what was actually going on with the weather because we hadn't been watching it. Yeah. I and so then we like came back inside a couple different times and uh, then I said after all of that, I was like, huh, this is weird. I don't have my computer. And the first thing I used to pack up, like literally whenever we were in a watch, I would pack up my computer and have it like in my camera bag because that's like my most valuable stuff. It's what keeps like businesses going and stuff like that. So to me, that's like besides the dogs <laughs> is like my thing that I take, right? Like I don't have expensive jewelry, don't have any, like you know what I mean? Like I take, I like photo albums to be already down there, which we don't have that. We need to get that done. Yeah. This was kind of a wake up call today, but I was like sitting there like my computer is upstairs. All my cameras are, up, are upstairs in the house. All of our products is in the house, you know? Yeah. The whole point um, is your priorities, how they change yeah. when you got a kid, you know? And, and it's, it's not even our kid, but it's just the fact that that's all we were worried about. Like yeah. nothing, we weren't even thinking about anything else. And we know that we have friends that have kids, you know, that, yeah. you know, we, they say it changes your whole life and it, that was like, it happened and we didn't even realize it was happening. And it was we wild because usually I would, once I start thinking about that, oh, my computer's up there. For one, it minimum needs to be unplugged so that lightning doesn't strike and get to it. Like all these different things, I would have started to get anxious over it. I literally had no anxiety <laughs> around it whatsoever. Like I kind of thought to myself, damn, like that would take us a while to rebuild. You know what I mean? Like that would yeah. suck or like whatever, but I literally didn't care. And all I cared is that we were all just chilling down there and happy and fine and whatever. So overall, how was the cellar prep thus far? Well, we weren't done no, prepping not, the cellar. No, not at all. And that was obvious whenever we were down there. And the thing is, is that I cannot remember the last time I actually like went to a cellar and set. Yeah. Um, we either. were trying to think about that whenever we were down there. My brother was thinking that he never has. I was thinking that the last time I was legit scared about a tornado and trying to find a hidey hole was in Ohio. Whenever we were at a birthday party at a restaurant in Ohio. Yeah. And we were trying to like uh, go to the walk-in freezer for refrigerator because <laughs> they don't have hidey holes up there, you know? Yeah, because it just doesn't happen. We, like Austin and I were talking about in the last video, we'll link that down below our like cellar prep video, but we talked about going once whenever we lived in Stillwater before Austin started traveling. That was it, other than this in Ohio. We've got the cellar ready. My mom has like opened the cellar door. We've talked about it, but like I've never like legit went down there and set like we did today. And to be honest, if Briar wasn't here today, I don't know that that we would have went down there and set for what was going no, on. No, I don't think we would have. That's what I'm saying. Our instincts were changed just because of him being here, you know? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. It's also like funny that my brother was like down there because the only reason he even was down though there is his he kid was knew there. it was ridiculous, he was also okay with it. And I think that before Briar got there, if we were down there like that, for one, he wouldn't have came over. For two, he wouldn't have been down there with us. For three, he would have made so much fun of me, it wouldn't even be funny. And so it just, we were all kind of like, we were chill. It wasn't like hysterical or anything, but it changes things. For sure. That's so neat. We got yeah. a lot of rain. Yeah, down at the farm, Colt said they got, I think, an inch and a half in 30 minutes of rain. That's wild. A whole bunch of rain. And that it shows outside. And then we got even more that I just showed you all yeah. um, just now, which it looks like it's let up a little bit, but tons of rain. Just got a flash flood warning a little bit ago. Yeah. Which so. I'm sure there's some flooding in town. Colt went to town after he left here and said he didn't see any damage where mm. he went, but... Yeah. Um, they were talking about it on the news a little bit, so. Yep. Austin was showing, um, we'll see if we can find the video and link it below. Austin was showing me earlier this guy that, I think he actually is a storm chaser, or at least no, it really? seemed like he kind of was personally, but anyways, he got it with a drone. He got a tornado that was touched down 
with a drone, which is wild. I'm really curious to know what drone he was using because most drones like that high of winds which the tornado only looked like it was probably like a f1 yeah it was maybe small. Just going. It, was, it was pretty small and it looked like it was traveling pretty slow but still to get that footage is it's cool insane like yeah. i don't know it brings you back to like twister you know like that it's crazy just to see those like at that angle that close to it it was out in the middle of nowhere where he was shooting it so yeah Another thing I want to talk about is I've met people, we've both met people from up north. Uh, Sam, a helper that I had last year, for those of you that might have been following us for a while. Sam's from Wisconsin, and they don't have the, these kind of bad storms up north. And he was like, I think you guys are crazy for living down there. Like He was, he was like, I would not live down there. And I feel like we've said that about other parts of... Other natural like, disasters. Yeah, like, uh, like down south in Louisiana or like... Uh, People that are from Louisiana or Alabama or Mississippi down there, they get floods a lot from the hurricanes and stuff. But well, they... just hurricanes in general. Like, yeah, hurricanes hur scare me because I know nothing about them. I don't yeah. know what to watch for. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you seeing it on the news and knowing somebody personally or seeing it personally, the devastation that it can cause or what the right way to prep, like, what works for prepping and what doesn't. It's just being, it's just not knowing. Whenever you don't know, well, then you're scared. Right. And I think what I mostly realize here is, is it's home. Like people like that aren't from there, like we've met some people from Canada also that don't understand it. They're like, how do you deal with all that? Like, why do you, yeah. why do you keep rebuilding? Why do people keep rebuilding? But that's because it's home. That's, we know it. We're really familiar with it. And I, and I think that goes for, for everyone that are used to where they're from, where they live. You know, they... They're used to it. It's home. So, of course, they're going to keep rebuilding because they like Not it there. Not just it's used to, to it, but, yeah, that's where they want to live. And, like, a lot of people around here, which it's it's the same in other states as well, but, like, a lot of people from Oklahoma grew up here. Their families are still here. Mm -hmm. So, like, you know what I mean? They want to live close to family, and so that's where they rebuild. I have to say, though, I've said this before. There is this spot in this city, and if I can find one of the maps, I will link it down below, too. But it basically, there's an intersection where three of, I think, the biggest tornadoes that have ever come through Oklahoma have went through. This, like, one point where they all met and it shows their paths. Their paths are similar, but a little bit different, but they all met at this one point. I've driven really close to that point before whenever stuff has been, you know, torn down by a tornado. And right around there, it does blow my mind whenever people rebuild. Just because I feel like while I'm not sure how scientific that is, that just seems like really bad odds <laughs> like to live in that area. Um, and so that's really interesting to me that they even rebuild in places like that. But if, they're re if they are willing to rebuild in places like that, clearly, um, you know, people will rebuild anywhere. So that's Where, pretty interesting. Where's that? It's, I think it's like in near... I didn't even hear it. It's like between the city and Norman. Oh, yeah. Or yeah, near yeah. Moore or something like that. Yeah. I can't remember exactly. I'll have to find one of those maps. Real bad. real bad there. Yeah, and um, we were talking about this down there, but we actually... I lived on the west side of Stillwater whenever I lived in Stillwater, and we got a ton of warnings there, and occasionally we got a couple watches. Watches whenever it's bad, right? Yeah, yeah I think so. Watches, watches yeah. is like the next step. And, but there was, for one, there was a storm tracer that set, like, our, where we lived was right off of the highway, Highway 51, and there was a storm chaser that set out there, and as a kid, we would, like, take him drinks and snacks and stuff, and we could always get an update from him, and also we kind of knew by how he left or where he left if it was serious, and we got really lucky living there. Stuff would, I don't know if it has to do with the ge geography of, like, the land or whatever, but stuff goes around Stillwater quite a bit, like a lot. Um, it misses Stillwater. But Cushing is actually a place where they come through quite a bit. And will touch down, you know, a right around here. And so, living here... Did I already say this on the video? No. Living here, we have got and have been in so many more watches than what I feel like I ever was in Stillwater. So... That's pretty yeah. interesting too. It does feel like our chances are heightened a little bit because 
we seem to be in a pretty good line with those spots in the city. So maybe we we're crazy too. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't feel crazy. And as soon as we were underground, like, I don't know. It's just, I mean, yeah, it's devastating. It would be devastating to lose things. And I think that that's the other part that people don't understand is like the devastation. But again, it's not like the chances are really, really high. And like, why do people build million dollar properties like on the coast if there's a hurricane season every single year? You know, it's because you like the place or people are near there that you want to live. Yeah, and to be perfectly honest with you, every they're called natural disasters for a reason. They're all different, but they all cause similar damage or they can cause and so it's really just a matter of how it would hit you it's not that you're safe anywhere if your property is above ground <laughs> and you know what i mean like you're just you're not safe anywhere so that's kind of that's kind of my take on it yep the yep. storm season is upon us here it's, in oklahoma no we're it's not upon us we're in it upon us the same thing i thought it, that means it's coming oh well, the storm season is here. Yeah, it's here. Here in Oklahoma. 100% here. But I think we go. can go ahead and end the vlog. Because oh. we've got 18 minutes here, and plus I've filmed this morning. So Maybe we should start a podcast. I think we should start a podcast. <laughs> Honestly, I was curious if people would be interested in um, us doing some podcast episodes on industrial tradition. Not that it would become like the industrial tradition podcast forever and ever just the two of us but it's a lot harder logistically to get guests on which I'm still really passionate about and I definitely want to do but between now and then should we get on and do some podcasts and if so Kayla what would you I. want us to talk about yeah Kayla and I, me and me and Kayla yeah not just Austin it's not Austin's podcast <laughs> no I just meant, <laughs> meant not not you interviewing somebody but you already said that that's yeah, what I meant right but I was just joking because yeah. there's there's a couple people who aren't gonna you know want me to be on there well, no but to be also that's coming to austin would like to start one yes i would like to have a podcast whenever we can logistically figure it out yeah well whenever we can we're already short-handed to say the least yeah. trying to keep up me and kayla just ourselves we need help but anyway once we can get to that point to where we can handle the podcast I would like to have a podcast yeah. so it'll be pretty cool to focus on the welding stuff so interviewing people that pipeline in general and the pipeline welding. industry yep I think it's gonna be I'm really excited about it anyway I guess we better end this video yep a little bit of storm life but yeah you. oh as an update like we need to put more stuff in the cellar yeah it's not right. ready so. We, I went down in my um, moccasin house shoes. <laughs> that wasn't the plan. <laughs> We're supposed to have closed toed shoes down there. I was wearing my house shoes also the first time I went down there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we need a couple more things. Also, it's really loud down there. I told um, them about that. We got to do something about sound deadening. Not that that's a big deal, and I told them that already too, because I'm glad to have a hidey hole that's safe. Oh. I don't worry about noise. But with like kids or anxious dogs, that noise just makes it sound way worse than what it is, you know? Yeah, so. especially like, you know, sitting down there today, the storm mm. was relatively slow moving co in comparison to what they can be. And while sometimes that's really nice because typically that means that people, you know, get to a safe place, um, have more time to get to a safe place. It also means you sit down there for a while if you go down there too early. And so, yeah, for sure. Make the chairs more. were great. Yeah, yeah um, good choice. Those are a great thing to have down there. Colt took a nap, fell asleep. Wasn't worried about nothing. Colton Breyer passed out. <laughs> That's how intense it was in case <laughs> you were worried about us. Yep. Alrighty. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see y'all later. We love you. Be grateful. Work hard. And have fun. We'll catch you in our next video. Bye.